Here's an example of how when you're writing the Python scripts, you have your hands on that data, you can sort the data. Sort it by latitude, sort it by longitude, sort it by the float ID. The task I gave the students was pretty simple. Pick two floats. So I'm just giving them uh, some easier uh, lists to, to find floats that they might want to follow. And this assignment is going to carry through the semester because these floats will keep popping up every 10 days. So I want them to keep watching. There's a list of the floats by ID. If you click one, you get the Google map for a particular float. And if you click the little blue link that you see in the white space right in the middle, that will take you to the official Argo website, and they can make graphs of the salinity temperature data that is taken by the individual float. They can look at the maps of the drift of the float over its history. They can get to know this float up close and personal by going to the official website. But this is essentially how the maps product works. You add locations and you get a little Google map for each individual one. And there's all 50 for, for group two or whatever it is. So I select 50 randomly using the random module in Python. Each student picked two and wrote a little report on each two. So maps is very uh, important. Clone board, uh, <coughs> There's been a long saga of uh, forums and message boards and the clone community, but this one seems to be good and stable and simple, as the authors uh, insist that it should be. Not too many bells and whistles. This is just a snippet from one of the assignments I did for historical geology. I did this for evolution and DNA coverage. I did this for radiometric dating and geologic time, where I just simply said, ask me two questions, at least two questions. That means they're only going to ask you two. Uh, but ask two questions about anything in those chapters. And you can see the dialogue. That, that on the left, that's at, from the actual assignment. And if you can make it out, each of those big blocks of text, that's me talking. And the short ones are just the questions. I was. I should have been surprised, but for the uh, DNA and, and evolution part, I got questions about every genetic malady known to man. So I had to look up uh, all this stuff that I just wasn't anticipating. I gave a pretty fat answer there uh, because, for all of these, because this will help me the next time I teach this course. Because when I, when I talk to experienced online teachers, they can their answers so that the next time question comes up again, they, they look back at the old answer and they don't spend two hours. Uh, they, they leverage their previous work. So clone board, simple but very effective. You can have a central clone board message board, but as you can see, as I did with the location assignment, you can have uh, point-specific forum discussions. So if you have an assignment on the Argo floats, there's a forum specifically for that assignment. So you could have forums all over your site if you wish to. And last couple of things uh, that I'm still working on, quizzes and exams. I didn't know that I was going to be doing the exams in Plum until last week. And something fell through with my arrangements to have the students come into campus. I didn't realize that the testing center charged $60 per student, so I canceled that idea. So now the pressure's on. I have to come up with a solution to do online testing in Plum by Monday, because I'm giving midterm exams Monday or Tuesday. I'm going with option two after some testing yesterday. Plum form gen, which you normally would think of as adding a form like for signing up for a conference or something. Uh, you add a form to a clone website, the user fills it out, submits, and an email gets sent. That's one way to use a form gen. Another way that they just added is to add a 
save data adapter. So it will save the data to that form, to that spot where that form lives in that folder in Plum. So in doing some testing yesterday, I was able to make multiple choice, true, false, a short answer, long answer, uh, easy, using the uh, sort of widgets uh, toolkit that comes with Plum Form Gen. And I still have some fancy footwork to do in the next few days to pull this off, uh, but uh, I think it will work. And so I'll write a script that will create the exam and stick the exam in every home folder for every student, setting it to private so only that student can see their own exam. I have to make a decision as to whether I'm going to go monolithic and have 50 questions or whatever in one web page or have discrete question items. I think I'll go with the second, so that the student can submit their answer for number one, submit for number two. Once they do, they can submit it back. Let them go back. Uh, another approach that you can take is a uh, long survey. Uh, yeah, survey? I was going to suggest that. Yeah. Uh, which um, you can create the survey to the Yeah. Uh, they can only submit it once. Uh, that way you don't have to point out all the videos to the first one. Also, you can be able to get the file uh, in that way. Uh, oh, you can well. say, uh, I have a problem on my side, so you'll say. Is that fun well, I'll, I'll pick your brain, Barry. I'll, uh, I'll recognize your face and I'll correct you. And also, uh, you get a score at the end for each person who does participate. It, it keeps track of some additional information. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, there's a survey to be either, um, you can have it so you know, you're going to take the survey in their answer so you can figure out if an angle. Have you ever scripted it to, to write a Python script? To uh, I'm not yeah. a programmer, so. Yeah. Well, I'll have to do that. I can even show you. Uh, I'll just use, I'll find out the internals of using for Invoke Factory, and if it works out, um, I'll do some testing tonight on that. For progress reports and grades, similar script, uh, you can easily by a little block of code that will find all the objects on the website. And these aren't huge numbers, but this is one place, uh, plum site for one class. And uh, it will quickly give you all the objects and sorted by student. Then I run that through the steps on the right to filter by due dates. So I had assignments for each week. So I'm going to do this like a month, give them progress reports, and paste these, uh, and create these in the individual students' folders. Because they need feedback. How are they doing? And how do they do on the different exams? And uh, quizzes. Some manual work here. What I've, what I've decided to do that seems the most practical is I run the script on the Plum side. It gives me all the objects in the like, comma-separated values format take that, paste it to my desktop. There I operate on it, create HTML pages for the individual students. But I have to manually go through and do the scoring myself somewhere. So I do it right there. And then I paste that manually in the individual students' folders. You can automate all of this to some extent, but I think there's a case where I think I need to do some of this manually. Yeah, I think that if, if a student wanted a progress report, you could extend it.